The turn is pretty great, another ace, and now he bets 600. He covers me, so we have 2500 back in our stack. And I believe it's time to raise here. I don't think calling and checking again is a good option. So I say those magical words. Oh. I'm all in. What's up everybody? When I was finishing making this vlog that you are about to watch, I started wondering why not telling you guys why do I think I'm capable of actually showing you how to beat 2-5 and 5-10 normal holding cash games. If you don't know me, my name is Romo, I'm 28 years old and I was lucky enough to start playing poker when I was 17 and since the beginning it was like love at first sight, I really fell in love with the game in a way that I could feel that I would be profitable at this game and I played in Brazil for 5 years until I got an opportunity to go to US uh, with a scholarship in soccer and when I got to the US I started playing 1-2 at the Horseshoe Casino in Chicago and then I made $32 an hour playing 1-2 which is 16 big lines an hour which is crushing the game and when I got my bankroll up I started playing 1-3 and 2-5 and traveling around the US to make vlogs for this channel when I did that in that year I made $43 an hour and I was really happy with my results I made plenty of videos for you guys while I made that result but then I came back to Brazil and when I came back to Brazil I had a trouble to go back to the US because I wasn't a student athlete anymore because I dropped out of college to focus on this channel so throughout 9 months that I was in Brazil and I couldn't get back to the US I started playing online and studying using GTO Wizard and that showed me how many mistakes I was doing and I improved my game a lot through that time over the 9 months that I was outside the US and then I made everything right, like I got my visa back and came back to the US playing a way better poker than I was playing before. And then I made a great result, let me check here so you guys can have access to it. I decided to play mostly 2-5 and 5-10 in this last month that I was in the US. I played in Dallas at Texas Car House Dallas where I made $81 an hour. I also played in Round Rock, Austin, where I played at the Lodge Car Club, where I made $80 an hour as well. Playing at the Lodge, at Texas Car House, I played 2-5 only. And at the Lodge, I played 1-3 and 2-5 because sometimes they didn't have 2-5 so often. But the 1-3 there plays really big and it's pretty much like a 2-5 people buying for $1,000 usually. So it's a great game. And then I came to Vegas and in Vegas, I decided to play 2-5 and 5-10. But I just fell in love with the 510 at Bellagio. It's a great game, $1,500 max buying. So even though it's a 510, it's a, five, it's a small 510 where the field is pretty soft. Like it's not as soft as two fives and one three around the US, but it's, it's a great field and it's a field where you can make a lot of money. And I actually made $108 an hour playing 510 at Bellagio. So in the end, I really crushed two five and 510 everywhere I've been over the last month. And this is why I feel capable enough of showing you how to make profit consistently on 2-5 games around the US. And I'm sure that after you watch this video, you will get a lot of insights and new tools for your game for you to have better results at poker. And this is the mission of this channel. The mission of this channel is helping you become a better poker player. And let's go to the video. What's up everybody? Today's episode is gonna be at Texas Card House Dallas. I played in this room for 8 days and this is the 5th session I played in this place. Great room with a very soft field and here is already my first advice if you want to make a lot of profit from 2-5 No Limit Hold'em. You should choose wisely on where are you playing because game selection does make a difference at anyone's win rate. You wanna play versus bad players so you have more space to make profit and Texas Card House is definitely one of my favorite places in the United States to play 2-5. Great game, very deep and one mistake I made in the past that I would advise you not to make it especially if you can play well playing deep is buying in for more than 750 back in the time I record this session I decided to buy in for 750 because that was how much I was comfortable on playing and I was well studied but people burn so much money on bomb pots and also pre-flop and post-flop that I would highly recommend you to buy in for way more and play wisely and don't put yourself in situations that are not plus EV for you. Situations where you see many of my opponents putting themselves in and in the end losing money because of it. One of the first hands I played in this session, I get pocket sixes from the small blind, under the gun stratus to 10, plus one stratus to 20, button who seems a recreational player and has a lot of chips in his stack 
the size to call and here with pocket sixes I could either call or raise and I decide to raise to $140 won't mind if everybody folds everybody folds to the button who quickly shoves all in for $750 and I see myself in a tough and interesting spot I gotta call $610 for a pot that already has 925 so my average equity for this call to be profitable has to be around 40% and I've made this calculation in my head but the way you can get to this number is actually making a rule of three that we learn in school like when you are 14 years old I guess I don't know when do you learn that in the United States or in your country but the right thought process is not am I flipping this hand no you gotta actually try to understand what is your average equity versus his range with pocket sixes so this average equity is bigger or smaller than the one you need which is 39.73 percent and in my opinion I wouldn't put aces kings queens and even jacks in his hand the way he played because okay he flat call he could have flat call with those hands but I don't see him so quickly shoving all in it looks like he wants me out of the pot so let's put jacks, tens, nines, eights, sevens in this equation, but let's also put fives, fours, threes, deuces. Uh, I believe he could also have some ace five suited, ace four suited. He could definitely have ace king, ace queen, ace jack, which would be hands that I'm a little bit of a favorite, as you can see in the screen. So overall, I believe I'm in a pretty good shape against most of his combos. And in average, I will have more than 40% equity, which is what I need. So after considering for a couple minutes, I decide to call. He quickly shows a skin. Our equity versus that particular hand was 54.99%. So the call was profitable. And we decide to run it twice. And let's see what happens. <laughs> That's not you. That's not you. That's me. Yeah, that's all. That's me too. Another both, all you. Oh my god. We're flipping and you want both, man. All the outs. They had tens? I tell you, you know. In the end, he wins both flips, which is unfortunate, but it's gonna happen. And he wins the hand. After this hand, I mean, the first hand, I already lost $750. And if you watch the last episodes, I am playing for 26 hours now at Texas Car House and I'm losing now around $800 to $900 with Rick included already. And I was kind of mad, mostly because I was playing good poker, but I was running bad, just like you saw. And in poker, many times poker will test you, poker will put in bad spots. And many people, what they're gonna do is tilt, is start playing bad. While I try not to let myself do that, and the way I found to avoid me tilting is actually putting good things in my head and trying to stay wise and calm. So Proverbs is a book that I love it and I highly recommend you guys to read it. It's a book written by King Solomon that was one of the richest men in the history of humankind. And I decided to read this book and I showed you guys here because I really wanted to stay calm. That was a Saturday, so that was a great day to play poker and the table was awesome again. Don't allow yourself to play tilted and don't allow yourself to make bad decisions while you're tilted because that's definitely gonna make your win weight bleed and you don't want that. Don't allow your feelings to jeopardize the way you play and make you make worse decisions and let's see what happens in the future hands. Many of you guys already understand what this sign means. It means the table is really soft and you guys are gonna be able to see why is that. Next hand I get King Jack offsuit from the button, two limpers and I raise in position to $30. Three players call, so four players see the flop, which is one that I miss. Everybody checks to me and I decide to check back. I don't think if I bet I'm gonna make them fold so often, so that's why I check back. Turn is a king of diamonds, everybody checks to me again and I check again. And in the river, I have the nuts, so that's great. I'm gonna try to extract maximum value here. And recreational player from last hand decides to bet $100. Here, of course, I'm gonna raise. The question is how much. And I decide to raise a sizing that maybe he decides to shove all in and put pressure on me thinking I don't have such a great hand. So I decide to make $300, leaving $420 behind. Everybody else folds. 
and he thinks for a long time until he decides to let his hand go and we win the pot. This next hand, I had just came back to the table, so I had to post 5, and I see 5-3 suited. I check, I'm in the hijack, button raises to 20, big blind and I call, we go 3 ways to the flop, which is a great one, I have a flush in the flop, we check to the button, who shoves all in for $300, big blind fold, and I call, button already realized that he's in a bad shape. He says I win, I show my hand, and he shows ace 9 of diamonds. He bet 500% of the pot all in with ace 9 of diamonds and a board with ace queen 10 all hearts. And that's the table I want to play. I believe that's the table you should want to play as well. A table that makes a lot of mistakes such as this one and we win the hand. This next hand I'm in the cutoff with king queen suited, low jack raises to 20. I'm gonna 3 bet here for sure. I 3 bet to 65. Only big blind calls, we go heads up to the flop, which is one where we hit top pair. He checks to me and I'm gonna keep betting. I see bet 55, one third of the pot and he calls. Turn is a blank, a three of hearts. He checks to me again and his effective stack is 210. I believe betting half pot or putting him all in is gonna represent the same strength. So I decide to put him all in. He folds and we win the hand. This next hand I'm on the button with king jack offsuit, high jack raises to 15. The vast majority of the times when I join a hand versus an open raises before me and I'm in position or out of position, I'm gonna usually 3 bet or fold. So I decide to 3 bet this king jack offsuit. GTO really rarely joins a hand by flat calling in position. Most of the times, the vast majority of the times, GTO 3 bets or fold. And the reason for that are many. When you 3 bet, you put the guy in a very tough spot while you also open space for everybody to fold and you win the hand without paying rake because most rakes in the US don't charge rake preflop. So that's why most of the times when you join a hand in position and out of position, I highly recommend you to raise or fold. So here I decide to 3 bet with king jack offsuit. Everybody folds and I win the hand. Next hand I'm in the big blind with pocket nines, low jack raise to 20, cut off and button calls. And here with pocket nines, I'm gonna definitely re-raise. It would be a big mistake to just call here, especially because cut off like in buttons range is pretty capped. I don't see him having aces, kings, queens, jacks, even tens. So I'm most likely beating them with pocket nines. Low jacks effective stack is 300. So I decide to make 135, around half of what low jack has and around twice the size of what the pot was before which the pot was 67, so I made almost exactly twice the size of the pot. Low jack folds, but cut off and button calls, so we go three ways to the flop, which is not an ideal one, but not a horrible one as well. King six deuce with two diamonds, I have the nine of diamonds. And here I believe a mistake would be not C betting, because I'm gonna still be winning this hand pretty often. So I decide to C bet one third of the pot, only cut off calls, we go heads up to the turn, Turn comes a blank, a 3 of hearts, I'm still beating ace high, I'm still beating flush draws, I'm still beating some combinations with the 6, I'm losing for a king, okay. He has like 110 behind, and here my intuition said that it's better to put him all in instead of check and let him see the river for free. So I put him all in for 110. He thinks for a while until he decides to call, I don't think he would think for a while with the king, so I believe I'm ahead. He calls, I show the nines. He mucks and we win a very welcome $887 pot, winning around $550 so far. Next hand I'm in the cutoff with ace king offsuit, two limpers before me, I raise to 30 in position. As you can see this table limps a lot, which is great, like you wanna see a table that plays away from optimal theory, and optimal theory never limps. I rarely limp, but sometimes I do and you will see here throughout some of my vlogs me limping in the situation I do that, but most of the times when you see a table that limps a lot, that means that the table is soft, only low jack calls, we go heads up to the flop, which comes queen, jack, four, with two spades, and I have the ace of spades, he checks to me, and this board is way better for my range than his, I still have a gut shot, two overs, I got a runner runner flush possibility, so when he checks to me, I decide to bet big, because I want him to fold the hand, but in case he calls, I'm still in position with a great hand. I bet around 3 quarters of the pot, he folds and I win the hand. If you want to crush 2-5 and 5-10 fields, 
you should be really good at understanding board textures, polarization or not, because pretty much the more polarized is your range, which means the most strong hands that you have, the bigger your sizing could be. Because I could have here aces, kings, ace, queen, queens, jacks. I could have many great hands in my range. So that's why I can bet bigger here. I could either go with over bet in the flop if I wanted. I didn't, but just so you understand, the more polarized is your range, the bigger your bet can be if you want. Shout out to this guy who was a really funny dude, a good player as well, and I'm gonna play a big hand against him really soon. I forgot his name because I'm terrible at names, but bro, if you see this video, please say something in the comment section because I really like you, man. Next hand, I'm in the hijack with black queens. I open raise to 20, button and big blind call. We go through ways to the flop, which comes king high with two clubs. I have the queen of clubs. I decide to check, button bets 50, and if I check here, I'm gonna call, turns a jack, doesn't change much, I check again, and he checks back, which is a great sign. River is another 8, now I'm losing to pretty much any pair he made in the flop, I'm winning mostly flush draws. I check to him, and he bets $50. Not feeling good about this sizing, I could either call or fold, here looking at him, I felt like I was losing and I decided to fold. Hey. Yes. And he shows King 7 offsuit. Man, he's flat calling, open raise from hijack in the button with King 7 offsuit. That's great. Like he hit his king, he won the pot. But when you see a showdown like that, at least when I see a showdown like that, I love it. And I really see a big edge that I have on the table. That's a really bad flat call. If he wants to play this hand by 3 betting, it's gonna be less bad, but it's gonna be still bad. Like King 7 offsuit is just an uh, open fold there. But he flat called, he hit his top pair, he won the pot. Congrats to him. But I love to see that, and you should love to see those mistakes as well in the table. Because those mistakes are what makes your win rate be so big versus those players. This next hand is a very interesting one. I get pocket jacks in the cutoff. Under the gun straddles, two limpers before me, as usual. I raise to 55, and then my friends that I just showed you re-raises to $200 from the button. We're playing $3,100 deep. I could either 4-bet or call here, and I decide to call. If we were more short stacked, I would probably 4-bet, but deep the way we were playing, I decide to call and see a flop out of position. The flop is an amazing one, ace-jack-6. Hopefully he has ace-king, ace-queen in his hand. I check, he bets 300, and in such a dry board, one where ace queen, ace king, ace 10, even ace jack is really in a bad shape and there are not many cards that I don't like. So I'm gonna check call and evaluate the turn. The turn is pretty great, another ace, I'm losing mostly to ace 6 suited that are two combinations, aces that there is one combination and some very unlikely combinations of ace jack. And now he bets 600. He covers me, so we have 2500 back in our stack. And I believe it's time to raise here. I don't think calling and checking again is a good option. So I say those magical words. Oh. I shove all in for $2,500. He thinks for a long time. And then shows an ace before deciding to fold. But when he saw his cards, I could see a 3 there as well through the camera. So he had ace 3 of spades, a complete bluff catcher in this hand, and nice fold for him, and we win a pretty juicy pot. Winning $1700 so far, and the table is still amazing by the way. Next hand I get pocket jacks from the button, 3 limpers before me, I raise to 35. As you can see, we're playing a late night session here, and late night sessions is usually the time that you're gonna find the best tables inside live poker. Two callers, until cutoff shows all in for 255. Clear call for me, and that's what I do, I call. We decide to run it twice. Both boards are pretty good for me, he shows pocket threes, and we win both boards. Winning a little more than $2,000 so far. Next hand I'm in the small blind with ace-jack offsuit, three limpers. <laughs> I love this table, man. In those situations, out of position, I usually raise twice the size of the pot, 
And that's what I do here. I raise to $50 from the small blind. Big blind and middle position call. We go three ways to the flop, which is one where I hit top pair. Jack 8-7 with two hearts. I have the jack of hearts. I'm gonna keep betting here. I see bet 65, little more than a third of the pot. Big blind re-raises to 165. No reason to panic here. I'm gonna just call and evaluate the turn. Turn is an eight. I check again and he checks back, which is a great sign. River is a 10 of spades. And here I could either go with check calling or bet folding. But because I don't see many bluffs in his range, if I check, I rather bet and in case he raises, I'm gonna fold. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna bet. I bet $200. He calls. I showed the ace jack and it's good. And it's important to say here that those river decisions are very important for your win rate. Let's say I decided to check here and he decides to check back. That's $200 less that I would have under my win rate if I didn't decide to lead instead of checking. So be thoughtful about your river decisions because they are really important for your win rate and as well as all of your decisions, pre-flop, post-flop, a huge win rate comes from many good decisions and small mistakes that we all are gonna do. But the less mistakes you do, the better your win rate will be. So keep an eye on all your decisions and try to be consistently making good decisions because the better you are at doing those decisions, the better your win rate is gonna be and the better poker player you will be. Winning $2,340 and I decided to stack my chips and finish the session for today because I was really tired. In every vlog I make in this channel, I try to pass along the best of me to try to really put more money in your pocket and help you have better results at poker. If you have any question, feel free to leave it down below that I'm gonna try to respond everything. The mission of this channel is helping you become a better poker player. I really hope I achieve this goal in this video and see you next time.